Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so starting off with a Zenithal Prime for our Roman general here. As well as that, I've also just put a little bit of uh, sand and rubble from my driveway just onto the base here as well. So it's got a bit of ground texture. Then once we've done that, we can start off with our skin. So starting off here with our flesh tone, we're going to give a nice overall coverage using the full and uh, hopefully right potential with our Zenithal highlight that we've got here so we can see the dark areas and the light areas when we come to painting on the highlights in the miniature as we're going along but remember we just want to keep it nice and basic for now so giving a nice overall even coat and then once we have that complete we're going to come in now with our first highlight we're going to use barbarian flesh to do this so this is going to be our first highlighting area so we're trying to remember some of those areas where we had that nice white lighting from our zenithal prime and hitting those areas where the sun would naturally hit, like the top of the nose, the eyebrows, just a little bit of the cheeks here, since we've got some nice sculpted cheeks on this miniature. Just going in, so don't be afraid if you need to, to switch to a smaller brush to do this as well. Then once we have those highlights on the face done, and on the fingers and hands, we're going to come in now with some contrast painting. We're using Black Templar to do this, and since we've already got that nice Zenithal Prime over there, we can use a little bit more effect with our... Uh, contrast paint that we've got here and give a little bit of variation into the color once it's fully dry but it's just a matter of just getting a little bit of that contrast paint which in this case is black templar and we're using it for the color of our roman generals here so it's just a matter of being careful because it can be runny so just being very careful as you can see i'm more dabbing it than brushing it on just so i can really have as much control as i can to really make it look like it's hairline and that's going to be the best way we can get those results that we want then with our generals here complete, we're going to come in now with some Mephiston Red, and this is going to be for a nice chunk of the miniature here, so it's going to be our nice deep red that we want to have. And we'll be using it on the underclothes of uh, the clothing he's wearing, so underneath all his armour and everything like that, so basically his uh, skirt he's wearing, uh, as well as, of course, his cape. We want that nice bright red Roman cape for, you know, your typical roman sort of appearance and the mephiston red being a nice deep rich red is going to help with that as well and it's just a matter of going around into all the little nooks and crannies and everywhere we can see and giving a nice overall coat and as you can see i have thinned the paint down just a little bit so you can see that uh nice zenithal highlight through there as well so don't be afraid to just build it up in a couple of layers as well then once we have that red complete we're going to come in now with some ivory and it's time for the nice tricky parts of the miniature and that's always the eyes. So you can see I've got a, a nice point to my brush. And I'm just carefully dabbing it into the eye socketed area. Being as careful as I possibly can. But just remembering you can always go back over with those highlights that were placed beforehand to tidy up if we need to. And then when we have that base part of the eye complete. We can come in now with some matte black and dot on those pupils. Now this uh, miniature has sort of like some uh, pupil eye areas sort of. Uh, completed in there and that's basically where I'm placing those uh, pupils into the eyes I made them just a little bit bigger than they are naturally carved in there just so you can see it especially on the table from a distance so that's why I'm going in there and picking those out and then once we have those eyes complete what we're going to be doing now is going to come in with some greedy gold and we're going to be using this for the base color of his uh, chest plate of his armor as well as some of the uh, cuffs he has on his hand as well since he is a general and big and important in the army we want to make him stand out and be a bit more flashy i've looked at some uh pictures online and um historical pictures of that of uh, roman generals and their sort of classical depiction of colors that they wear so this is pretty much the way i'm painting them up and then once we have that complete we're going to come in now with some gun metal which is just going to be a nice dark a silver color and we want to be placing this on areas like the pauldrons and just the little tabs uh, of his uh, skirt that he has here he's got some little metal bits connected to uh, other part of his uh, skirt there that you can see so we want to be picking those out as well and just anywhere else where we can see any metal exposed is where we want to be painting this gun metal color 
Then once we have those metallic silver areas picked out, we're going to come in now with some charred brown. And this is going to be a nice uh, dark, deep brown colour that we want for uh, areas like his leather gloves, as well as his boots as well. It's pretty much the main two areas I'm going to be focusing on with our nice dark charred brown. It's going to really help bounce off being a dark colour with all these other colours we've got on here as well. So it's going to help it stand out on the piece as well. So just paying attention to make sure we don't get it anywhere we don't want it to. And then with those leather areas picked out, we're going to come in now with a different brown, which is going to be mahogany brown, sort of a lighter uh, reddish tone brown. And we're going to be using this to be painting up the scabbard of his sword here, just so, because he's clutching it in his hand, basically at his waist. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still in the scabbard there, so that's what I'm painting it up as, rather than just have it holding it by the blade. Somehow it makes a lot less sense, so I'm pretty sure it's a scabbard. But totally up to you what I'm going to do here, and I want to make it uh, in this different brown colour so it can stick out from the rest of the brown we've just painted up. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using deck tan. And this is going to be our base colour for the whites that we're going to be painting on the miniature. So it's sort of an off-white creamish colour. So we're going to be using this for just a little bit of the undershirt as you can see there. As well as that I'm going to be giving him a nice white fur uh, mantle on his uh, cloak as well. So we want to be painting those two areas up with our deck tan colour which is going to be a nice base starting colour for the white fur we're going to have. And then once we've done that, we're going to come in now with some washes, and we're going to start off, of course, with flesh wash, and we want to be painting over the areas of flesh. As well as that, we're also going to be painting over the gold areas as well. Uh, it's going to really help enrich those golds out too. I also forgot to mention one thing when we're painting up that uh, deck tan area in the previous step. I also painted the uh, rope and string along him that he's holding his... Uh, gear together with as well the deck tan colour as well. I want it to be a nice show off white against that gold chest plate too. But then once that wash is completely dry we're going to come in now with some seraphim sepia which is going to be our next wash and this is going to be just for one specific area on the model and that is going to be the fur on his mantle on his uh, cloak that he's got here. Seraphim sepia is going to really help change that colour up and make it sort of look like a unusual sort of animal skin so that's the theory i'm trying to go for here but you could easily switch it out with just a known oil if you just want to make a straight black i want to go with a little bit more interesting colors on the piece so once that's dry we're going to come in now with some agrax earthshade and this is going to be a nice obvious one we want to be applying this over the miniature in the areas where we've got our nice natural colors so it's everywhere that's pretty much brown so we want our gloves our scabbard our boots, areas like that, everywhere that's got those nice natural brownish colours, it's going to be covered in the Agrax Earthshade. Then once that Agrax Earthshade is completely dry, we're going to come in now with some known oil, and this is going to be for the rest of the piece that's left over, so pretty much just the red areas of the miniature, is pretty much the only areas we have left, as well as on his head as well to darken that uh, black on his hair down, so don't forget to do that too, and we're going with nice big good overall coverages and of course be a little bit careful too with any pooling in the areas especially on that cape since it's such a big smooth flat area it's going to be very likely to try and pull at the bottom so just keep an eye on it as it's drying just wick it up with your brush to get away any of that excess then once our known oil is completely dry we can come back in now with some deck tan and we're going to be of course applying it to the areas on our mantle Pretty much uh, everywhere that we've already used our deck tan, but being careful to only get those areas of uh, natural highlight. So especially with this uh, mantle that he's got on his cloak here, I'm picking up those really high sort of uh, ridged areas where it shows those tufts of fur. They're great places for picking out the extra detail that are nice and sculpted in there so you can get some really good highlights going. Then with those parts picked out, we're going to come in now with some Retributor Armour, which is a, a lighter gold than we used our Greedy Gold, so it's going to help add in that more sh shine once we've applied those washes on there as well, so it's going to really enhance that gold look like it's definitely gleaming out in the sunlight, and of course we want to be hitting those areas where the sun is naturally going to hit, so anywhere that's sort of uh, ridged and pointed, but also on the flat parts like you can see I did with the uh, gauntlets he had there just being careful and making i'm doing it on the flat part that's really going to hit that sunlight and then with those gold highlights complete we're going to come in now with some charred brown mixed in with just a little bit of ivory to lighten it up and just hit those high points on the areas where we want that nice leather brown uh, colors in there so just being very careful 
to not get it anywhere we don't want to because we want to try and avoid painting over any of the highlights we've already done but we're just again picking out those areas that are nice and out facing us that we can see that would naturally be hitting the light and then once we've picked out those leather areas it's time to come back in with some of fist in red and reapply the highlights that we want there so of course we're doing the exact same thing which is naturally hitting those big bold edges that we have especially on this miniature there's some nice uh, very big flat areas that are nice and out in the sun so it's good uh, practicing for any highlighting you're trying to learn so always for me trying to learn how to get better highlights and stuff so this miniature is going to be quite good for that too and you can see there's a nice big ridge just along here where the uh, cloak seems to fold just a little bit so we want to pick those areas out as well as well as want to try and apply just a little bit of highlights to the actual cloak itself and avoiding those areas even though it is uh, big and flat we do want to add some areas in there so we've got a little bit of visual interest as we're looking at the piece And with all that completed, we have finally finished painting up our Roman General from the Hail Caesars game by Warlord Games. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along and copy what I did, or you just want to use it as some inspiration for your own painting. So with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.